Hello, and welcome to the complete overview of SOLIDWORKS Composer. My name is Scott Woods, Product Manager of SOLIDWORKS Composer here at Hawkridge Systems, and today we're going to go over the general overview of Composer, along with some advanced items as well that we'll just touch on in this presentation. If you see anything that you're interested in uh, and you want more information, please contact me direct at scottw at hawkridgesys.com, and uh, if you want to set up any kind of formal presentation, uh, we can do that as well. Okay, so just to kick this off, I like to show uh, this slide. We have like four PowerPoint slides we'll get started with here, and then we'll jump into the presentation. So we have engineering in the middle, and really engineering is uh, essential to accessing 3D models in most companies that we that we visit, most companies that we go to. So what uh, what we have been seeing is that engineering has the tools, which is SOLIDWORKS typically, to access the 3D models that are developed by design. Now, there might be other groups within the company that need items from those models. Say it's a exploded view, or maybe an animation, uh, even step-by-step -step stuff, or screenshots, you name it. You know, there's these different items that, let's say, like marketing or sales or tech pubs need, but they have to go through engineering in order to get any data from the models because because they're the only ones who have access to it. Now, in most situations, you don't want to give access to everybody because then they'll also have access to mess up those models, to um, edit the design, which is not ideal. So what Composer offers is the ability to install it on everybody's machine. We can do network licensing just like SOLIDWORKS. And everybody has access to those models, but nobody without having SOLIDWORKS installed has actually the ability to modify or edit anything. So anybody who needs a screenshot or a rendering or animation or what it, whatever it may be can jump into the models, pull what they need without the ability to actually edit that design. Freeing up engineering's time to do what they're supposed to be doing, which is design and engineering. Okay, so what does Composer do? Really, it's designed for th creating technical documentation. So that could be user manuals, assembly instructions, operation, maintenance procedures. Really, all those are very similar to each other. And when you're developing, developing these in Composer, you're actually doing the exact same process. It really is just how do you want to publish these at the end. Do you want to, at the very end of, you, of the day, publish this out as a video? Maybe publish it as interactive content using the SOLIDWORKS Composer player, which is absolutely free. Maybe you want to print a PDF similar to like IKEA step-by-step -step instructions. Um, maybe you want to make a video. So there's many different things that you can use Composer for, but really how you get there is the same process, which I'll go over when actually in the software. The next thing on the list here is exploited shop drawings. So what I'm seeing time and time again is a lot of companies are spending a lot of time taking their assemblies, exploiting them apart, creating build materials, balloons, and uh, printing those out, bringing them down to the shop floor, replacing binders, and so forth. So what Composer can offer as a solution to that is uh, one of two things, or might be both. So we can put the player with computers out on the shop floor where people are accessing and be able to actually pull up these drawings and view pre-created or even create their own exploited views. And um, that will eliminate the need to use up a SOLIDWORKS license to do that, to you know, running down to the shop floor, replacing images, replacing drawings. So another, another helpful use of SOLIDWORKS Composer. Of course, it assists in going paperless, reducing the file size, so typically it's a 40 to 1 ratio from SOLIDWORKS to Composer. And really the big item here is allowing anybody who needs access to the 3D models without giving them access to edit anything, because Composer is not a design tool. SOLIDWORKS is your design tool. Composer is a technical documentation tool. OK, um, just got a couple more slides here before we are done with the PowerPoint section. And uh, this is a good workflow that I'm seeing in most companies that I go to visit. So how, what, how this works is we have SOLIDWORKS at the beginning. 
we got a controlled document such as a PDF at the at the end. Now how we get there varies from situation to situation, but most of the time how this works is the 3D models are developed in SOLIDWORKS. We then create configurations, take screenshots, maybe send the actual product through design or through R&D and take photos of it. Those are then brought into Word, compiled together, and then a PDF or some kind of controlled document is saved out from that. So if, you, if you're familiar with this process, really the downfalls come when you're trying to create an update. Because we go into SOLIDWORKS, we create our update, and say we have 80 configurations, one for every step in that assembly. For one, it makes assembly huge, makes it clunky. But now if you have one little mistake, your, your, your configurations explode. They don't do what they're supposed to do. Uh, because SOLIDWORKS is a design tool. It's not made for doing technical documentation such as this. Now, if you had took any photos, now you have to retake those photos, and uh, you have to compile all those images together, edit the, docu edit the Word document, output a controlled PDF. So once we implement Composer into the situation, typically we see about an 80% time savings in both creation and update of the documentation where we can take the 3D models from SOLIDWORKS, bring them into Composer, set Composer up for the final print document or even the interactive document out of there. So uh, that could be any step-by-step -step procedures, operation manuals, um, assembly manuals, you name it. And we simply push out a PDF from there, which really reduces the steps and keeps everything associated back to the SOLIDWORKS files because Composer is always looking back at the SOLIDWORKS files. We can update it any time with the new data. There's one other workflow I like to throw in here, only because going from this step to this step might be a drastic step, or it might not quite work into your current workflow as you would like it. So another thing Composer is capable of is saving out multiple images. And then we can still take those images, link to them from Word docs, Excel docs, publish, Publisher, InDesign, you name it. You just don't embed those images into that document. You link to them. You can even have your website linking to these images. So when you update SOLIDWORKS, go into Composer, tell it to update, it pushes out those images and replaces the old ones all in one shot. And then that leaves you with all your documentation automatically updated that is actually linking to those images. And then if you want, you can save out the PDF for the control doc from there. So it really is that easy. And again, we're seeing an average of 80% time savings with our case studies that we do with our customers. Okay, so the first example of a publication out of Composer is right in PowerPoint here. So here we have a interactive animation, which means it looks like a video. We have this robot climbing a box, but I can rotate it and I can look at different angles at any time I want. So that was the default animation it just played. So now if I want to play that same animation, I can rotate it. And I can look at different angles of this animation while it's doing its thing. I can even go in and uh, we can hide items, show items, and really anything that we would like to do. Uh, so there's a lot of control. This is the Composer player embedded into PowerPoint. So it'd be really good to show if you're doing like some kind of trade show or sales presentation or something like that. So now I want to show a couple more examples out of Composer. So Let's go to our publications, and the first example here is the rendered, rasterized rendering out of Composer. So that's this guy right here, and as you can see, you're not going to look at this and say, wow, that's a, that looks like a photo. That's not the purpose of Composer. Composer's rendering uh, capabilities are the fastest on the market, so whatever you see on screen is going to be exactly what it saves out when you save out those images or animations or even interactive content. They're identical, so there's no guessing. So it's not like you're rendering out something, waiting a while for that to render. You go back to Composer, and you're like, ah, oh, that's not quite right, and you're doing that back and forth. No, whatever you see on screen is what it's going to output. In this sort of rendering style that you see right now, this is what you can expect from the software. Uh, if you're looking for more of like photorealism, uh, you, you'd want to look into PhotoV360, and that's one of our packages for SOLIDWORKS. Now, so this is the rasterized version. The vector version uh, would look something like this. And for those of you who may not know the difference between raster and vector, if you think of raster as like a 
digital image where you can zoom in, looks good, you zoom too far in, and it's going to get pixelated. Where a vector is a scalable graphic where you can zoom in forever and it's never going to get pixelated because it's just lines and stuff like that that actually make up the, make up the image. Here with the vector image, we have what well, are called hotspots, so items that are lighting up, and I can actually select them, which is going to dive into that sub-assembly, explode it out. All this is done in Composer. This is just the publication we're looking at. And you'll see that the build materials, the balloons, and the parts all highlight up, letting me know exactly what it is I'm selecting. If I click on another sub-assembly, I can dive even deeper into that, and then I get down to the part level. So keep in mind, this is an SVG. It's a very standard graphics. It's a uh, very standard scalable vector graphic. And uh, this is all HTML compatible. So if you're trying to connect this to some kind of like shopping cart or your website, you can do that. So you can set this up so we can actually order these components or use them for in-house sort of um, projects. OK, so the next one here would be our animation. And again, it doesn't look photorealism, but it looks very nice and it's very clean. And this animation was put together in about three hours and took about 10 minutes to render out, which is super fast. You can't create an animation any faster than any other program than that. And actually, the beauty of animation in Composer is you don't have to learn to be an animator whatsoever. You set up your step-by-step -step procedure just like you would for your step-by-step -step document. You'd simply now drag that into the timeline and tell it to save that as a video. It really is that easy. And that is the animation. All right, so the next one here, we'll do the printable PDF. So keep in mind on this PDF, this is SOLIDWORKS models brought into SOLIDWORKS Composer. And then all the work is done in Composer and then saved out as a PDF directly after Composer. So there's no saving out a bunch of images, bringing it into another program, creating text, and doing all the other stuff and publishing it out. You can do that. That's a totally, totally workable workflow in Composer. But keep in mind, it's not necessary. As you can see, you can get a lot of power directly out of Composer. Um, if you need more, I guess, customization than this, then saving it as images, bring it into a Word or Publisher document is not a bad idea. That's also a good workflow. Okay, and for the last example is the EXE. So this is a self-executable file, and um, it's all packaged into this very small EXE file. So I, and I, was, I put that on the website just to show how you would link it to your current website where you can put a link on there, have somebody click on it, and have it execute or open directly from the website without having to download, speci you know, specify a download to the desktop and go there and try to open it. it. So you can skip all of that hassle. And you get a nice rotatable model, step-by-step -step procedures, and you get everything you would expect in that printable document with the added benefit of this is now a 3D model where we can, we can pan it around. You can put rules on here showing you here, I, I'm trying to rotate and it's not letting me. So in Composer, you can specify that these individual views, or even globally, you can't pan, you can't rotate, you can't measure, um, or you can allow all that stuff. And so you have a lot of control over what the end user is able to see. You can also set a, like a self-destruct on this document. So a certain period in time, it will stop working. Um, you can denature the edges, so you, if you're uh, worried about somebody trying to reverse engineer the product, they won't be able to get accurate measurements or anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shut that down. And let's jump into the Composer file. So as you can see here, it just under 2 megs, and when I double click it, it takes about 3 to 4 seconds to um, load the SOLIDWORKS, or the SOLIDWORKS Composer application. And just like that, we have the model loaded and it's ready to go. So with that, um, you know, this was probably about a 60 meg uh, SOLIDWORKS model. And so we got a 60 megabyte SOLIDWORKS model. That's the assembly, all the parts. You bring into Composer, and it's less than 2 megs. And that's less than 2 megs with all these steps created. Any images, this background image um, in there, uh, balloons, build materials, all that stuff inside a single file. And it's still under 2 megs. 
So typically we're seeing about a 40 to 1 ratio, so a 40 meg SOLIDWORKS assembly is going to be a 1 meg composer file. And so that's going to also dra uh, relate directly to performance. So you can do more with a lesser machine, and you don't have to be an engineer to learn how to use composer. As you can see when you look at the interface, everything is laid out very easy. So if we want to move something, we go to the transform tab. So for instance, if I were to select a bunch of stuff and I wanted to do a real quick, you know, like linear explode, I could just go ahead and drag those items out and do something like that. So there's a lot of automated explode tools. Or we can come in here and I could go ahead and grab components individually, drag them wherever I want them to go as well. But I really do like those, those automated explode, explode tools. And so if you have to move something, every feature in this software that has to do with moving an item is going to be under the transform tab. Now anything that's two-dimensional, like exploded lines, arrows, annotations, notes, all that's going to be in the 2D tab. So I can come in here, I can go path, like create associated path from neutral, and just that easy, by selecting those items, I can go ahead and I can specify width, colors, and I'm controlling these, these paths. Now, keep in mind, I'm doing this just for presentation purposes as far as the full control over these elements. However, you can set up what's called a style. So basically, it's a template. And so every person in your company, when they're developing anything, it's going to have the same font, the same you know, size, the same coloring, the same arrow lengths, you name it. Um, all that can be set, and everybody can reference those settings uh, so everybody's consistent. And across the board, company-wide, six months from now, you go to edit something, and it's not going to look different. So that's the idea behind that. Okay, going to the assembly tab. What I like to point out here is that the assembly structure is going to be identical to the assembly structure in SolidWorks. So if you have an assembly in SolidWorks with sub-assemblies and parts, you bring that into a composer, it's going to, the structure is going to look identical. So especially if you're working with two different groups, and one group says, hey, you know, sub-assembly B part Z uh, needs to be updated, they can re or maybe it was updated, they can say, hey, that part's been updated, people who are using composer or people using SolidWorks, and everybody can be on the same track and up to date. So very nice that when you switch environments, you still have these similarities that you can reference back and forth to keep everybody on track. Okay, so we've gone ahead and create this, uh, made this exploded view. Perhaps I wanted to assign bomb IDs to it. So in Composer here, uh, that's as easily done as going to our bomb workshop. And let me go ahead and I'll just reset everything here so it's we get a fresh start. And uh, we have these components. So these components currently do not have any BOM IDs assigned to them. But I can go, go ahead and develop them. If I do a compare geometry by exact, every single exact piece of geometry is going to have a unique BOM ID. I can also assign this by properties. It would be your metadata. So data from SOLIDWORKS comes over into Composer. That's all your custom properties. So materials, coloring, you know, who drew it last or who worked on it last. Uh, vendor part numbers, bomb IDs, anything that's in that custom property will come to uh, into Composer with those parts and assemblies. So I'm going to go ahead and just compare the geometries, generate those IDs, just go ahead and make sure that we're going from 1 to, you know, 100 there, and um, let's go ahead and say that we want to create the callouts as well. And let's show the bomb table. So it really is that easy. You're just clicking on things. And if you like SolidWorks' automated response or Composer's automated responses here, uh, this is good enough. But of course, we're human, so we like to to add our own twist on everything. So if you want, we can go ahead and say, you know, this is just going to be on the left or just the right, or maybe we want to take these and kind of move them wherever we want. I mean, we can take the magnetic line. Uh, similar to what's in SOLIDWORKS, when you take that line, you can snap it to items, such as that. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this real quick here. Just take a line, move it around, and I actually want these to be messed up on purpose. This just show how easy it is to fix it in Composer here. So let's go ahead and say that we take this guy, and I want to take this line and move it be underneath the... Uh, 
underneath the model, move the model up, something like that. Okay, so now we have these two lines, and perhaps they are, you know, we have balloons crossing over each other. So what you can do is you grab the balloon, and simply by moving it like this, we can untangle these lines. And keep in mind when I did the automated positioning of the, of the balloons, it automatically untangled the lines. Um, but by doing this, we can go and say, you know what, that 5 shouldn't be up there. It should be down here at that location. It's 11 as well. Maybe it should be down here. This 2, you know, bring it up there. And it's just that easy to untangle lines and get everything looking as clean as possible with the ability to customize and move things exactly where you want them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and update that view. Now the build materials here, we have full control over this as well. Where we can go ahead and we can say like, maybe the header is a different color. Perhaps every like odd row is a darker color. That way we can go ahead and see exactly what's going on and be able to identify items in the build materials. But we can also take that a step further and uh, edit the, the meta properties for these guys. So any, any identifiers that come over with the SOLIDWORKS components, we can utilize that and we can show it in the build materials. So for instance, maybe instance names or something like that. And so all those instance names from SOLIDWORKS comes over into Composer. Let me go ahead and increase the size of this just so we can see it a little bit better. There we go. Just for the recording here, I'll make it big so we can see those instance names. Of course, if you were to print this, the paper, the paper size is going to be much bigger than it's showing here, so it will be, it'll be fine. I mean, we're talking about uh, uh, about 12, 12 point font there. Okay, so let me go ahead and create the view. And at this stage, let's go ahead and save out a a PDF. And if you see like down here, like this page two, if that's got your attention, that can you can change that to anything you want. Uh, so you can do your page numberings and, and so forth. Maybe this is this is the cover image, so of course it's not going to have a page numbering. And there we go. Now if I go to publish, I'm sorry, not that. We're going to print. Let's print all the views as a PDF. Now this PDF, um, that, you should already have this installed in your machine. Most Windows-based PCs have a PDF printer. If for whatever reason you don't, um, one good one that I like to use is called uh, Primo PDF. You can get it from like download.com. It's pretty easy. It's P-R-I-M-O. Um, and that one's a pretty good PDF printer for creating documents such as this. Okay, so now we have this PDF document that's all set up. We are pages set up and background and all that good stuff. Now keep in mind this background is just a JPEG image. So you just go in here to specify and then we can go ahead and point to any image that we want, such as this. This is just a JPEG image for that background. If I wanted a screwdriver, I could select that, which is, of course, not going to be ideal there. But just as an example. OK, so that's, uh, that's the majority of the items in Composer as far as the everyday uh, items that we use and stuff like that. So. There's a few other things I like to show um, in the software, but we'll keep it. I like to keep these presentations pretty short, so I'll give you guys more to call us back and ask about. But if we go to like our 2D image library, there are items that come over uh, with Composer when it's installed. And keep in mind, these are just JPEG or bitmap images. And if you have any custom tools or anything you want to bring into this library, you just put it in that directory and it will show up here. That directory can also be on your network and you can point to it from Composer. We simply just take these items, drag them into Composer. Perhaps you want to do some kind of attachment on there and we can easily do something like that. So you can say, you know what, we're going to go ahead and inspect this camera. And while inspecting the camera, maybe you want to do some kind of technical drawing of that. And so what we can do is we can take uh, this detailed view and let me go ahead and just zoom into that area. I want to select the camera. Now if you hit tab in Composer, it it hides items that you currently have your mouse hold, uh, hovered over. That way you can select items that are hidden from view. Let me go ahead and create a little detailed view of that camera. 
This is just an example. I clicked the wrong component, but it's fine. That works. So we have a detailed view of the shroud that the camera inside is, is currently being held by. So we'll go ahead and say, set our point uh, for line widths there, and then maybe something like this. So we got an inspection tool, and so we're going to inspect that in some kind of shroud, something like that. Okay, um, one last thing I'll throw out here before wrapping this up is the, it's called the digger tool. And basically it's a magnifying glass that we can use to look at different items in the model. But we can also use this to point to specifics and then maybe even dive down into those components. So if I wanted to pull up that camera, I can go ahead and specify what's going on in there. And then at any time I can go ahead and rasterize that as well. So I got this little rasterized view of what's going on. So, Okay, well, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and shoot me an email. If anything in this demonstration looked interesting, or if you wanted to uh, get a formal demonstration done for your company.